Welcome back. It is 1528 in the last one. Uh, we had Caesarea get proposed to very quickly. <laughs> we also had uh, Elizabeth start an affair with the king and got pregnant. Gabriel now knows, but then ended up gambling away his entire estate. So we're in a bit of a pickle. So this year, uh, Heath and Augusta are going to get married. Uh, that's Heath Dubois and Augusta Light, the princess. So he's going to get to marry a princess. Um, looks like the only Gainsford heir is going to become a child. And then um, Arthur and Sarah are aging up Heath. Okay, so yeah, we're, we're doing pretty good. Although Elizabeth has her birthday this year. So that's the thing I'm a little worried about because she is pregnant. <laughs> So let's roll. Uh, no two, four, or six for Nicholas II. He has to survive. He did. Okay. Arthur and Sarah can't get a seven or a 13. Check and check. Will they get married? No one through five. Check. Check. Babies. Three and five. Arthur and Sarah, three and five. Sarah Goth is five. Okay. Lots of Sims coming to the baby making age soon. <laughs> okay. Heath Dubois, number two. Uh, getting no three or 18. He squeaked by. And then Elizabeth Larkin has to get an eight or above. Will she do it? No. Okay, you guys. Oh my gosh. Okay, so she's also... So, I'm going to let her have the baby before I kill her, but you guys. Oh my gosh. I'm going to say that she's probably going to die because, you know, her last baby was hard on her because she's older. And I think that, like, keep having babies, she's, like, kind of too old to safely have a child. Um, that that's what happened. But anyway, I also want to introduce you to a new family, which I already actually forget uh, who made them, and I forgot to update that. That's my bad, but I will tell you right now. Um, where are they? Somewhere around here. Let me see. We're above this. Above this. Here they are. Okay, um, a wildcat 16 made the Del Rio family. Let me write that down. A wildcat 16 made the Del Rio family. The Del Rio family escaped from Forgotten Hollow during the war. Looking for a new start, they moved to a new country. However, before completely bidding adieu to their old life, Rickson was attacked by a minion of Vlad's and given a parting gift. So here they are. We have Felicity, who is the mom. Rickson, who is the dad and has become a vampire uh, as they were fleeing Forgotten Hollow. And then their daughter, Rebecca, who is gorgeous. <laughs> Beautiful. So that is that family. Introducing them now. And yeah, let's hop into the game. Alrighty, so here we are in our household. Once again, Elizabeth is pregnant with the king's baby and Gabriel is not happy about that. So let's actually have them argue a little bit. Um, here's what I'm thinking. So obviously, like Elizabeth is wondering why Gabriel isn't more okay with the whole situation. Because of course, like if the king wants to have a baby with someone, he's going to have a baby with someone. Like there's really nothing they can do about that. And also like it increases her status and, you know, she's his wife and all this stuff. And he's like... You don't get it. I have been holding over his head that I have sons and he doesn't. And now he's having a son with my wife. Like, you know, so Gabriel is really unhappy about the whole situation. He does not feel like um, she understands him at all. And that, you know, she did something so crazy and so big. And she's like, well, what did you want me to do? Say no when he flirted with me. And, you know, it's this whole thing because it's not really like that they could say no to the king. Right. But, um, you know, it's it's just difficult because Gabriel and the king are frenemies <laughs> and they are arguing and Gabriel is not happy. He does not want to raise another man's child, even though he has made many uh, like he's made his his 
various ladies raise each other's children. <laughs> but um, he, you know, of course, it's a double standard, right? Because it's okay for him because he does whatever. Anyway, so he kind of uses this fight as an excuse to you know, hide away a little bit because he is another problem. And the other problem is that he has lost his estate. And we're currently making money on Cesaria's estate, but we do not have, um, it's not, it's getting us like maybe 9,000 a day. And that is just not enough, right? That's not enough, especially when he's got like a billion children he has to provide for and provide money to. And he's like kicking himself that he let himself get so worked up that he would wager his estate and lose it. So he is trying to make jewelry and like get his business up higher right now, work on the business a bit because of all of that. So anyway, uh, then we have Cesaria, who is plotting with her bestie. They both hate Beatrice. They hate her so much and they hate her because she is the daughter of a marquis. So she has a lot of power and standing and she also... Um, is lovely and everybody likes her and all the guys are into her and they just hate her. <laughs> they hate her so much. So um, they have been plotting and they're like, oh, we have to do something. Like we have to, to take her down a peg, all this stuff. You know, I don't know why everyone needs to be in this conversation, everyone in the entire household. <laughs> but um, yes, so she is definitely struggling. Um, Cesaria is struggling with not being you know, the most popular or whatever. And so she is definitely looking to, um, um, take down Beatrice, even though poor Beatrice didn't do anything to her. <laughs> Although the, she did kind of, because Beatrice wasn't putting up with her, her, uh, crap. So she, she did snap back. But anyway, then we have, um, Alistair here and Alistair is going to come talk to Gabriel because he's been trying to court with Susanna Dubois and I realize something now because I don't really want to I want to try as much as I can until we have too many sims to have um, the sims not marry other sims that are already in the spreadsheet because I rolled for the number of babies he has I rolled for the number of babies Susanna has and it's different numbers and I'm just not really like you know, that's not the plan I wanted to go forward. So I'm thinking he needs to marry someone who's not in the spreadsheet already. So him and Susanna also didn't have a really good impression of each other. He, the date didn't go well, the initial date. So what I'm thinking is he's going to tell Gabriel that they're just like not compatible, but don't worry. He'll like figure something out and he'll make sure that, you know, Gabriel isn't disappointed with his choice and everything. He just, you know, says to Gabriel, like, trust me to do this. And <laughs> so, um, that was my dog <laughs> wanting to be pet, <laughs> if you heard that. Um, so, yes, uh, that's basically what's happening there with Alistair. And then we're going to head out to here again. And honestly, I'm getting so frustrated with this a lot because I feel like every time I come here, the Sims glitch out. They don't do what I want them to do. On top of that, like I'm having trouble getting the Sims to stay and or even to come. The Sims that I wanted aren't even here. And it's just really frustrating to me. And they're all trying to freeze to death on top of all of that. But they just don't do what I tell them to do on the slot. And I'm thinking that I might have to stop using the slot, which is really annoying because I like this lot because of all the, the like grounds in the back, but whatever. So Alistair and Susanna are talking about cooling off uh, their relationship. And basically he's, he's telling her like, you know, don't worry about it. Like it's not going to cause any problems on, on my end with Gabriel or with anyone that you, you know, have to deal with that. So anyway, uh, we are going to, I, so here's where I'm trying to get some stuff to happen and it's just not working really well. Um, it's just really not, not working super well. What I wanted was to do some stuff with both Alistair and Thomas, but of course they're not in our household. So I, I use the control any sim mod and it's just not working. And so actually what I do for next time is I am going to move all of the sims that I need for what I'm trying to do into our main household so that I can have more control over them. So hopefully that will help. Um, so I am going to, the toddlers have gotten their toddler skills up. They're fine now. So I am going to just send them off to another household so I can bring Alistair and Thomas into, into the main house while I'm trying to get them married off. Because what I'm thinking is we have right here, Juliana Gainsford. So she is also the daughter of a Marquis. And I really do think that she would be a good match for Alistair. So um, I'm hoping that, that they can do that and perhaps... 
get along. So we'll see about that. But for right now, nothing is happening. All the sims are frozen. They're not moving. They're glitching. So what I'm going to do instead, because I'm sick of this, is I am going to um, change households so that I'm in uh, the let it household. And then we will you know, do our best to control them and actually do stuff with them. <laughs> so uh, let's change households. Um, and then we are going, well, okay. So before we changed households, I was trying to uh, get Juliana and Alistair on a date at the restaurant, but of course that did not work. It just did not work. So it's fine. Everything's fine. This game hates me. <laughs> it really does, but that's okay. So, um, we are going to try this again, but in their household. So we're going to start with Alistair. I'm just going to invite Juliana over. I'm sick of going to different lots. <laughs> so we are going to invite her over and see if they can get along. They haven't even actually talked to each other before. So let's have a friendly introduction. She actually does not have a great first impression of him, but it looks like, I don't know if they have good compatibility, but they're able to get their relationship up very quickly. So I am happy about that. Basically, so she is, um, let me check my spreadsheet. She is... She's the daughter of of the Marquis, obviously, uh, but what I'm thinking about her is that she um, she is the same status as Susanna Dubois, so I'm not really worried about that. Um, that, you know, leaves us. Plus, honestly, like a lot of the ladies that are available right now are like a vampire, Um Botrice, who we're dealing with with Cesaria, and then like Juliana and Barbetta Smith. Like, there's not there's not a lot of options, and um, Juliana is actually one of the best options. So they're doing really well. Their flirty is getting up very high. Uh, they just have kind of this whirlwind romance where like they just kind of knew like that they were compatible and they feel good about it, and they are just smitten with each other. And she's, you know she's happy to become a baroness. So they are going to get married. Unfortunately, they will not have any children. So the title will be passing to Thomas, who also <laughs> rolled to not get married. So uh, I think that the they, uh, Baron Let It title is not going to go very far, but that is okay. We are fine with that. We'll just make room with more stuff. Anyway, then what I wanted to happen during the ball, so pretend that this is during the ball, is that during the ball, Thomas kind of wanders the grounds a bit because he's not really interested in what's going on there. And he comes to see, this is Rebecca. Um, we just added her in. And so he comes to find her out here. And they are chatting and he's like, are you all right? Like, do you need help? And she, she admits that she's a little turned around. She's kind of lost on this, you know, on these giant like gardens with multiple levels and everything. She's just kind of confused as to how to get back. So he escorts her back, but they have like friendly banter along the way back and they have, you know, good conversations and stuff and become friends pretty quickly. So, um, you know, that was just their first meeting out in the garden so uh, he just escorts her back nicely and, um, you know, we're going to switch back to our main household where, again, we have Gabriel trying to make up for the lack of money that we have here. <laughs> Things are not going well for him. Uh, Gabriel does not want to admit that he lost all his money and he can't do anything about it because Cesaria is actually, um, you know, he promised that entire estate to... Um, to Albert Landgrab so in order to get him to marry his daughter so he is kind of concerned that he doesn't have or he can't go back on that you know I cannot find this bulletin board thing so I end up having to google it but there it is I see it now of course I see it now well I'm uh <laughs> you know watching it back but I couldn't see it before so I then Google it and then I find it here. So that's fine. But yes, because we know that Gabriel the second is a horse lover and, um, you know, Gabriel the first does not want anyone to know that they are having money troubles. So he cannot let uh, his spending let up, which makes it even more difficult to deal with all of this stuff. But, um, 
So what we're going to do is it is Arthur's birthday. Arthur is Elaine's child with Gabriel and he is legitimized. And so it is his birthday. But of course, Gabriel and him really do not get along. They do not get along at all. They, in fact, I was going to make them enemies at one point, but then the game glitched and made them friendly. So um, they do not get along at all. And we have um, everyone coming over to, uh, for Arthur's birthday, it's not like a huge ball or anything. It's just inviting some people over to the house to have cake and stuff. And so I finally am able to get Arthur over here so that we can age him up. And that's all good. So let's all have cake. And then um, because Gabriel hates Arthur <laughs> and is not very nice to him, um, he is actually going to announce to the room that he has a surprise. And there is where he will present a horse to Gabriel II <laughs> on Arthur's birthday. <laughs> what a jerk, right? So he then gives his son a horse because we know that Gabriel loves horses. So we now have a horse back in the household, although I don't know how much I'm going to actually pay attention to it. And honestly, I immediately moved it out of the household because I needed to make room for the Sims. But we'll still have Gabriel... Um, you know, calling over the horse, riding the horse and stuff. So anyway, the horse is in here and everyone is hanging out and um, meeting the horse and everything. And then Cesaria sees a Botrice awfully close to the back legs of the horse and she gets an idea. And so she kind of spooks the horse and then uh, causes Botrice to get hit with the hooves and like trampled a little bit. So, um, you know, everyone's freaking out. Gabriel just takes his horse and goes on a nice ride. <laughs> but um, yeah, everyone is freaking out because Botrice was attacked by the horse and she's all cut up and she she's, you know, all bruised and everything. And so she's going to go off to be helped. And then, of course, Cesaria is chatting with Beatrice and is like, oh, my gosh, did you see that? There's no way she's going to come back to society with her face like that. So Cesaria is mean, <laughs> is an awful, awful person. <laughs> but um, so she just basically disfigured Beatrice in order to, you know, get back at her for a perceived slight. But anyway, uh, the baby for with the king is a boy and we're going to name him Alexander and he actually does survive. But we know that Elizabeth is dying this year. So I'm going to say that Elizabeth died because um, because of, you know, the childbirth was too strenuous for her. She really shouldn't have been having children anymore. She was told by the doctor last time after she had her child that she shouldn't have any more. And then she still did. And so she had the baby and then she passed away. And of course, Gabriel's like, I am not taking care of this baby. So we are going to send the baby to the palace to be taken care of, you know, by like royal nannies or whatever. But, um, you know, the king is going to deal with that. So... Here's that. And then, yes, there we go. Just adding everybody in. Unfortunately, Elizabeth did pass away. And, oh, actually, did I fix that? Let me check uh, the spreadsheet. Where is Elizabeth? Yeah. Okay, yes, I did. I did make everything right in the spreadsheet. Anyway, what's going on here? So, yeah, we're going to age up the baby and um, send him away to the king. So there is that. Get away from the baby, Cesaria. <laughs> okay, so there he is. And um, we're just going to move him right along. And that'll be good there. So that is pretty much it for that storyline. Uh, we're going to give everybody their you know, birthday makeovers and stuff. So um, we're also going to marry off Heath and Princess. So Heath... Marquis Heath Dubois II and Princess Augusta Light are going to get married. I am excited about that. I think that they'll do good together. They have five baby tries, I believe. But yeah. Oh, and also, like I said, um, Beatrice does have uh, permanent injuries, unfortunately. So she is definitely, um, you know, kind of steering clear of society for a little while there which is unfortunate for her she did not deserve that but that is the way things are so anyway we're gonna add in um augusta into the dubois family and then we're also going to get her pregnant we're going to change her outfits to pink and yeah she is now part of the dubois family 
Um, she is the Marchioness, but, um, you know, obviously, I don't know, like, if, I know that you're supposed to take on your husband's title, but I don't know if, like, Princess Anne is married, but we still call her Princess Anne. Like, I don't know. So, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Moving on, uh, we also have birthdays from Nicholas Gaines for the second becoming a child. Arthur Larkin became a teenager. Sarah Goth became a teenager. Heath Dubois II became a young adult. Elizabeth Larkin passed away. Crispin Strahd and Amicia Strahd became children. Alexander Larkin was born. And then Heath and Augusta got married. So we are in good shape there. And uh, yeah, so Gabriel is having to deal with the loss of his wife. He still has young children. So I think that that kind of also helps us because I did say I was going to move the toddler so that I had more room in the household. So I think that moving the toddlers to go live with like Siobhan is good for us because Gabriel can basically say like a woman needs to raise the children. So that is definitely a good excuse for me just not having enough room in the household and not wanting to change the settings so that there can be more than uh, that number of Sims in the household. We just have a lot of Sims doing a lot of stuff right now all at the same time. And it's honestly a little hard to get it all done. Like I was like, I have to do X, Y, and Z today. And you know, it wasn't working and it's causing me problems or like whatever. And so it's definitely something where like, we've got like four teenage Sims trying to have their love stories at any given moment. So <laughs> it'll be a, a little better once they start getting older. But Anyway, um, what was I going to say? I wanted to look at next year. Next year is the year that Henry VIII finally seeks an annulment from his wife. I'm thinking maybe the birth of his son with someone else, uh, that being Elizabeth, is what spurs him on. This starts to cause issues between him and the church. We are finally starting these issues where the church and the and the king are starting to have conflict with each other, which is going to be really interesting because I have a big plan for that. And how that's going to affect us. Uh, Basil Larkin is aging up into a child next year. Olivia Larkin will be a teenager. And Leticia Goth is... Is Leticia even alive? She's supposed to become like an adult or something. Leticia... Yeah, she is still alive. I couldn't remember which Goth person was still alive. But she is. She did not marry or anything. So that's where we're going to wrap up. I hope that you guys enjoyed this part. I'm having a lot of fun. I'm really excited for next decade especially. Because I'm definitely going to cause a war between the vampires and, and religion and all that stuff. And I feel like that it'll all go really well together. So I hope you guys are excited too. And I'll catch you in the next one.